uh, we're going to have a, a joint presentation or divide it into two. So um, I'll deal with the, the first part and Anne-Marie will, will take over to um, uh, do, make some further comments and, and reach uh, conclusions. Um, uh, Outcome-based frameworks or uh, approaches. Uh, Anne-Marie and myself uh, had a, a book published <coughs> last year about uh, delivering welfare and social services in the UK and we had a chapter in, in that book on uh, performance, uh, performance indicators and, uh, and so on. Uh, and we had noticed in that, particularly with reference to Scotland and Wales, uh, a kind of use of uh, outcome-based approach by the, the Scottish and Welsh uh, administrations. And then, of course, uh, Northern Ireland began to, to follow suit with the, the, the OBA. Now, we have done some further work comparing Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, and that will be published mm -hmm in a, a chapter in what's called the Social Policy Reviews, Policy Press publication, uh, coming out in a, a couple of months' time. But today, I uh, want to mainly focus on uh, Northern Ireland and the, the influence of um, uh, o OBA. So that's a, a slight context to, to, to what we're, we're doing. Uh, we're going to divide the presentation in, into two, about three of these uh, topics each. Uh, we don't have a, a lot of, of slides, got a, a number of slides, but not a, a, a great uh, number. Um, so I'm going to, to look at some concerns raised by the use of OBA for the programme for government, uh, taking, obviously taking a more kind of critical approach to uh, OBA, but I, I'll explain that in a, a moment or two. Uh, then secondly, look at uh, forms or types of outcome-based approaches. Uh, and thirdly, uh, some of the conceptual difficulties, dealing with some of them briefly and, and just pinpointing one or two of the uh, key ones before uh, Anne-Marie con continues. <coughs> uh, now, so, so firstly, uh, concerns about the use of, of OBA. Now, I probably, like many people, uh, sort of first came across OBA really in the context of the production of the Programme for Government Framework uh, which was put out for uh, consultation. And <clears throat> I read this uh, framework, read it again. I kind of realised I thought I'd read this before uh, somewhere. And of course, it, it was the Scottish National Performance Framework that I was largely uh, reading. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the, the role of that and copying of that, but there was one important lesson to be learnt up, and this was several, the first of several concerns. Uh, and that was, of course, if, if you look at the Scottish Programme for Government, which is an annual publication, this is the, the current one, or the Welsh Programme for Government, you will see very little reference to outcomes. It's not really based on an outcomes approach. Uh, Scotland performs, has a, has a rather different <coughs> role and, and the use of, of indicators. So that was really uh, the first concern. How could you use uh, OBA methodology is basically an evaluation methodology uh, for a programme for government. <coughs> uh, what happened next was, of course, the outcome of the <coughs> consultation, which was a, a fairly major change made in the programme for government. <coughs> As you're probably aware, or if you can refer back to it, what happened was that the list of outcomes, uh, indicators and measures was changed. The list of indicators was dropped. The measures became indicators and were, were uh, renamed uh, measures. Uh, so that was fairly fundamental and was slightly puzzling. And then, of course, it emerged that this really had been advocated by some organisations uh, promoting uh, OBA <coughs> uh, out of the, I think, 750 responses to that um, consultation. So it looked, it looked to me as if... Um, OBA had rather taken over the programme for government, so I thought I'd better learn more about it. So I read uh, Mark Friedman's uh, book, uh, and that's when, a, as it were, a third or major concern uh, hit me. And that looking at the back of the book, there seemed to be no um, reference to academic references. It was a kind of a book almost with, with only one or two academic references, which in these days of academic 
um, research frameworks and, and, and so on uh, is, is highly un, unusual. Um, so if Mark Friedman didn't think much of uh, academics, as appeared to be the view, uh, what did academics think of, of Mark Friedman and its OBA? Well, uh, having looked at some of the recent textbooks then, uh, it was maybe equally surprising to see that there was almost no mention of, of, of OBA as uh, occasional mentions or a few comments. Uh, and even if you, and I just brought it with me to show you that I do have such things, uh, the Sage Handbook of Governance, which is one of the, the key books you must have in public administration, but edited by Mark Beaver, uh, but very comprehensive and basic in, in public administration, and there's scarcely any mention of OBA uh, in it. So this, this was a, a, a sort of third uh, puzzling uh, concern. Now, on the other hand, it is true that there were 750 uh, replies uh, to the consultation, and if you read, or at least the ones that were published, you'll see that uh, many of them gave their support to uh, an outcomes-based approach. Many of them gave their report specifically to OBA. Uh, now, there are one or two critical responses. The British Medical Association, uh, I remember, did note that there was no robust evidence at all to support the use of OBA in, in, in their response. Uh, but there was this general level of support. But uh, if you looked at it more closely, you'd find that's about all the responses said to the consultation. They didn't go into detail into why they supported it. They didn't go into detail as what they thought an outcome-based approach meant. They didn't mention any alternatives. So there was kind of more uh, uh, kind of issues uh, raised. Uh, now... Given that this was followed, of course, by the collapse of the Assembly and Executive, uh, it may have a, a, appeared that the uh, OBA and the Programme for Government would sort of be forgotten about or placed very much on the back burner, which maybe seemed to be the case. But, of course, only a few weeks ago, uh, the Civil Service or Department of Finance produced a, a document, a briefing document on, but on the uh, future budget in which they very much placed the OBA-based programme for government at the centre again, or kind of uh, <coughs> led with it. There are actually some changes. Uh, there are now only 12 outcomes instead of 14. Uh, <coughs> the list of indicators has become population indicators and, uh, and, and so on. But obviously, it was still regarded as having uh, a lead <coughs> role. Uh, now, this again... You know, leave some uh, concerns about what is happening and the use of evidence. Now, CARES, of course, uh, is involved in the transfer of, of knowledge. And uh, in this case, with, with OBA, the basic core of knowledge lies within the discipline of public administration. Uh, all these concerns about performance indicators, outputs, outcomes, and so on, it's, it's core public administration material. And therefore, there's a huge literature, there are masses of material on uh, performance indicators and, and these related issues. Now, having <coughs> myself attended some meetings and heard uh, OB, OBA people, uh, sort of commercially involved people, having heard civil servants, uh, local government officials, uh, all talk about OBA, they seem to be largely unaware of, of you know, where o OBA is located and about all this uh, amount of public administration material which they must, uh, well, they should actually in, in some ways uh, locate it or uh, discuss. Um, so that's really the background to why you're know, taking a little uh, critical approach and then moving on to the, the two other topics that I'm going to, to deal with. But, of course, there are many different types of outcome-based approaches. Uh, there's quite a large number. You probably couldn't guess how, how many there are. There are also, of course, um, academics within the field who don't approve of outcomes approach at all. Um, I mean, one quite eminent one is Professor Caroline Glendenning, uh, who thinks you should never use the term outcomes, that uh, it's too vague, that in a sense everything is an outcome, so the term is basically meaningless, and so you'll get that 
school of thought, but there still are. Um, there still is quite a lot of interest in promotion of uh, out outcomes-based uh, uh, approaches. And I, I obviously can't go through very many of them, but I, I just wanted to mention the, the four categories, or three, that's of, rela of related interest to OBA. Uh, first of all, the classical definition, and this is in the, the book by Pollitt and, and uh, Buchart on, on public uh, ad administration. Um, and they give what tends to be the accepted definition, the most classical definition of uh, needs or objectives, followed by inputs, followed by activities, followed by outputs, followed by outcomes. That's the kind of classical uh, methodology of uh, outcome-based uh, uh, approach. Uh, the second one, the logic model, this is one that has is, is become uh, very popular, it's fairly general, uh, model, and it consists, there is a slight error here, but it consists of priorities, inputs, outputs, and then short, medium, and long-term outcomes. So, uh, a typo there, it, it should be uh, outcomes. That's the, the logic uh, model, and one actually advocated really by the Scottish Parliament, for example, the, the, the logic model. But there are uh, variations of the logic model, uh, Scot there's even references in Scotland to using two of these variations, what's called the Wisconsin model, uh, and secondly, what's called the uh, Weaver's Triangle model. These are variations of the logic uh, model as a, a methodology. Uh, but then the third one I wanted to mention is, is one because it's used extensively in England, which many of these are not used extensively in, in, in England, um, outcome, and that's outcomes frameworks related to the National Health Service. And there are three of these uh, frameworks in, in use, one for the NHS itself, one for public health, and one for adult social care, the ASCOF, which is very well known, one adult social care outcomes. It's recently been adopted by Wales uh, for, for similar use. And these are, are uh, not that, that different. They, they identify domains such as quality of care, something like that, uh, different domains. They look at performance indicators that they put forward, but quite a large number of performance indicators, up to about 40. Or, or they, they got. Then they collect both objective and subjective data. Uh, where they are, are slightly different is they put a great deal of emphasis on user perceptions. A lot of it, uh, even maybe up to 50%, is user perception of the outcomes, user perception of the outcomes. And then the, the last step is to apply the lessons fairly generally to, to sort of policy, apply the lessons. And, and then we come to the OBA, the Outcome-Based Accountability Framework. Now, of course, where it's different, and as the Friedman uh, says, is that it works backwards, or it says it's working backwards. So it starts at where the other ones end. With the, it starts with the outcomes, as they're called. Then has a small number of indicators, which are uh, numerical indicators, four to six. Uh, then collects the data, analyzes the data, and uh, probably, it's not very clear about this actually, but as interpreted by the program for government, it, it would then specify the activities, it would specify the uh, uh, activities. So that's the, the, the OBA in HATS, it, it's different. Now, the last sort of topic that I'm uh, looking at is, is just briefly to look at some of the key conceptual issues that I think arise with, with OBA. And there's three of them here. Uh, I'll say a bit more about the third one, but the, the first two fairly briefly. And one is fairly straightforward and simple, and that is uh, the, the meaning of outcomes, the use of the word outcomes, and the way in which OBA uses the word. Uh, and of course, that is not really in its, its, its uh, normal meaning. I mean, outcomes means uh, an achievement or what has happened, what is retrospective. Um, but if you read OBA, what they mean by outcomes is a desired outcome or even an imagined outcome. They do say it can be an, an imagined outcome. So it's not an actual outcome. Now, that, that makes quite a, a, a difference in how you begin to analyse it because it, it means if it's an actual outcome, then it's an empirical statement. 
uh, if it's an imagined or desired outcome, it becomes an, a normative or value-laden uh, statement. So, uh, I mean, it it, it, it's more necessary then for if you're advocating OBA to, to be clear that you're talking about desired outcomes. It, 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 so there is a, a difference in language. And the second major criticism of the uh, definition of outcomes is one that comes really from the academic work, uh, again, uh, and that is that in OBA and other outcome-based uh, systems, they conflate a number of different items into the term outcomes. That is, they're putting together a kind of package which includes objectives, aims, goals, targets, uh, benchmarks, and outputs. Um, and there's, there's quite a lot of criticism of, of OBA at times because it it's, tries to state that there isn't a distinction between outputs and outcomes, and other people argue that's an important distinction. So uh, that's the um, uh, issue about uh, the, the meaning. Uh, I haven't put the name in there. There's one or two names of authors we refer to and you will find the full reference in the um, uh, paper we, we, we sent out. But uh, if you wanted to explore that view, it's, it's really Professor Alison uh, Petch in Scotland, who was head of the Institute for Social, Science, Social Services Research in Scotland. And she has some several papers about outcomes, approaches, and this is one of her uh, criticisms. Uh, secondly, sorry, I apolo apologise again for a sort of grammatical point here. There's really three points there, three different points. Uh, what does indicators mean? Well, one argument is that in OBA it's been used as a proxy, uh, and that's because the outcomes are far too vague to be measured. They're often unmeasurable, so that they have to move to proxy, proxy um, outcomes or things that, that uh, hint, hint at or... Uh, replace the outcome. Uh, secondly, there's, and, uh, um, that should, there should be a, a sort of mark after measure there. Secondly, often only as a definition, that the indicators are just giving you a definition of what's put forward as the general outcome, uh, and definitions don't mean a great deal. Or thirdly, and this is more important, they're actually being put forward as the cause uh, of the outcomes, that the indicators, there's an assumption that they, are, they will cause the out outcomes. Now, the third point then is, to follow that up, the relationship between indicators and outcomes, and uh, this is the last of my uh, slides. Just, um, that is that OBA makes this assumption, and, and this is probably the main theoretical criticism of OB OBA that, that you find that it makes a, an assumption of a simplistic causal relationship between the indicators and the outcomes. That is, if they have the outcome, very general, they have six indicators, they're really assuming that these six indicators will cause that outcome. Uh, now, the best expression of this, if you want to, to read it, is by Tony Bouverd, 2014, in his article about attributing outcomes to uh, social policy interventions, gold standard or fool's gold. So he's uh, quite critical in his approach. And he's arguing that um, you know, OBA involves a narrow, underspecified cause and effect chain model. That is their assumption, even though they may not be aware of it. <laughs> this is what they're actually uh, uh, doing. And uh, Tony Bovard, as some of you may know, of course, is a very eminent figure in public administration. He's a worldwide reputation. And you know, if, if he has been so critical, uh, you have to take it uh, seriously. Um, now, you get all our expressions following that up, that actual outcomes are very complex. So there's a whole interplay of factors. You can't reduce it to a short list of numbers, uh, or you, you can't simply measure it. And to try and work it all out and what are the actual causes is, would, would be very resource-intensive, as Connolly writes. Or as Professor Carl Tonnelly, Con Tannehill, sorry, Professor Carl Tonnelly puts it, uh, outcomes emerge from complex systems. She's a policy advisor to the uh, Scottish government, uh, Carol Tannehill. Uh, so that uh, it's much more complex 
than uh, the OBA makes assumptions about. So I'll hand over now to Anne-Marie to talk, to just finish on OBA and the policy implications.